Hello cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, and I want to say welcome to my kitchen, again. If this is your first time visiting our channel, we're really pleased you're here, if it's not, welcome back. I've got some food prep to do today. I buy my veggies in bulk, I always have, or I have for 30 odd years, which means that they need to last a long time. To get them to last a long time, I prep them and preserve them. So today I've got um, celery to do, some gorgeous red capsicums, and I want to do cabbage for sauerkraut. If I get all that done, I've got some rhubarb that I want to get ready to pickle but I don't know that we'll get that far today. I'm going to start with the celery because I want to chop it and blanch it and drain it before it goes into the dehydrator. Then I'll do the capsicums, get them ready to go into the freezer. Then I'll tackle the cabbage for the sauerkraut. Okay, first things first, let's get the pot on for the water for the blanching. Got gas, yes, we have. Let's turn it up a bit. Cool. Now, someone's going to say, but Kath, you don't normally blanch things. And guess what? You're right. If I'm freezing it, I don't. That's because what I freeze, we use, we go through fairly quickly. The dehydrated things are for long-term pantry storage, so they have to be shelf-stable for a long time. So I like to blanch anything that's dehydrated simply because it holds its colour better. Um, I think it dehydrates a little faster. I don't know about that, maybe. Um, but it definitely holds its colour better in the dehydrator if it has been blanched first. So let get into the chopping. I will be right with you down here. Here we go. Now, rough chops. Rough, rough chops. Um, get through. I've got three bunches to do. And I'm just chopping through the whole bunch. As you can hear, it's a lovely quick celery. I got it um, from Big Watermelon, which is a local greengrocer wholesaler to me. And it's a really great price. So I don't grow celery. It's fun to grow, but it is slow growing. It takes a lot of water. And it actually takes a fair whack of garden space. So I'd rather use the garden space for other things. So when I can get it on a great deal like this, this is what I do with it. Now, I won't chop it all, I won't blanch it all until I see how much is going to go in the dehydrator. And it has been washed and I am going to do the leaves too because we use the leaves and we'll save them and blanch them separately though just because I dry the leaves and then grind them into powder to make celery salt but this is just gorgeous celery crispy crunchy it's lovely Okay, one, one bunch down. He doesn't like fresh celery. Waiting for the water to come to the boil. Should have put that on earlier. Okay, move that to there while we wait. We'll tackle the capsicums. I don't know how you pour your capsicums, I tend to do it in, cut it into quarters like this all the way through, 
and then just open it and the core and the seeds pretty much stay attached. Now, I'm going to that little bit there to take out, like so. Right. Now, these are bought capsicums, so I'm not going to seed save from them. Because I don't think they will grow. Oop, noisy, sorry. Okay. to do so just go through them. I'm going to cut them into strips because I will use them for burritos and things like that. So we just love capsicum. Penny used to take capsicum to school for brain food. Um, but this is got no sound. Sorry, guys. Let me see what I'm doing. There we go. All right. Lost count of how many I've done. I started with five. Over. Oh no, that one's awful. Okay. Into the compost. Easy fixed. Um, I'm sure someone's going to say, oh, you could have taken those seeds out and washed it. No. Sorry, mould is not what you want to play with. You do not want to eat it. You don't want to breathe it in any kind of mould. So if you have mouldy food, it's gone. Oh, there we go. Okay. Get rid of those few seeds. Get those there. How's that water going? It's coming up. Take a while. All right. This can go into the compost too. I'll be back in a second. while we are waiting. Now I slice. Now I'm using a serrated steak knife because these knives are so so sharp. And they just go through and just roughly don't have to be fancy. I 
cream washed so they're ready to go in the bags in the freezer. They won't be blanched because they won't be in the freezer long enough. They will get used within the next few weeks. Um, these capsicums are a bit of a bargain. They're only $2 a kilo. So, and as it's winter here and we don't have capsicums in the garden and my capsicums last year from the garden didn't do so good. Um, so I'm very happy to have them for $2 a kilo. And this will keep us going for a while. They're just nice. The strips are just nice to fry up to put into burritos or dice them in a casserole. Easy peasy. Okay. I won't even be vacuum sealing them. That's how soon they'll be used up. I won't even bother vacuum sealing them. Normally I would. For long term in the freezer, they things get vacuum sealed. These don't have to be. Do you preserve capsicum? Do you freeze it? Do you dehydrate it? Um, if it comes back on sale, I might get some to dehydrate for the shelf. It's great in stir fries. Looks really nice in a curry. Um, once it's frozen, it has to be used in something cooked because it does go a bit, uh, a wee bit soggy. But that's okay. We can deal with it as we do. This has me thinking about when will it be time to start the capsicum seedlings for this summer to get out and have a look. with you she'd be eating it as fast as I could slice it. jars have just been washed so I'll bring them over they've washed those need to be wiped dry and labeled bring sorry about the rings cleaning in the background Working kitchen, working kitchens are noisy. Let's get the rings out of the way. 
って。Sealed six quarts of mince. So that's four meals per jar for me for my family. Which is all good. So this will be used for chili, spaghetti sauce, um, sloppy joes, whatever. And it can stay in that sink of hot water to cool. Now, by now, you'll know I don't do things like most people do. So there's no ice cubes in the sink. It's winter here. The water has the tap is icy cold. So a sink full of icy cold water does the trick. And I shall move these jars over all ready to go on the shelf. I have to say, this was Costco mints, and I'm not sure you can see. So I did my usual thing there. It's quite a fat cap on these jars. It was very fatty mince because before I can mince, I always boil it. Um, I boil it to par cook it. I boil it to release the fat. And then I rinse it under boiling water. I pour three or four jars of boiling water over it 
before it goes into the jars to decant it. And there is still a lot of fat in this mix. So someone might say that's not a problem. I don't like fat in my mix. I don't like a lot of fat in our food. So let me get this back to put back on to bring back up to the boil for the next launch. the lid and I will transfer the celery into this so I can put the strainer back in. Nice and cold here. just how lovely and green that is. Still crisp, but nice and green. Hmm, delicious. So I'll let that drain a bit before I put it in the dehydrator. Next bunch while we are waiting. Same deal, it's been washed, so I'm just going to chop it and um, put it in the Pot to mm, I didn't wash that bit very well. Best I, I like to have some people don't mind they hump it up, pile it up and have it in heaps. It takes longer. So as much of a single layer as I can get works for me. Perfect. Water's not quite bubbly yet. storage things that aren't going to stay in the freeze too long I just use freezer bags these are just the Coles brand freezer bags 
they do a fine job. This capsicum will be in the freezer maybe six weeks if it's lucky, um, probably only a month because we tend to go through it. So we just bag it up and squeeze as much air as possible out and put it in the freezer. So these are medium bags, you get 80 in a pack. I don't know how much they were, under a dollar I'm sure. They've probably gone up now. And all I'm going to do is, let's see, maybe a couple of handfuls per bag. Water is nearly ready to put the celery in. So, like I said, I am not blanching. I am just going to um, put in the freezer. All right, so the water is boiling. The water is boiling. We can tip this celery, this next bunch of celery, into the pot. The lid off. Two minutes, and it will be fine. All right, keep bagging. Because it's Sunday afternoon, and I would really like to well, maybe get some cutting out done. I've got some sewing plans I'd like to get done. So, and I need to get out and feed the garden because it. I need a feed, it missed it last week. Okay, a few more in there, a few more in there. Scoop it up. All right. I'm recording a video, my love. Just leave your plate there and I'll fix it in a minute. There we go. Squeeze as much air as I can out of the bags. Put it on the milk. I know some people will chop their capsicums. I don't, we don't use chopped capsicum very much, so it's a slice of the best for us. And some people actually just freeze them in clumps. It's not going to work for me. I don't need one great big clump like that. I like enough for a recipe. I just pull it out and um, what I want to do is Get a zippy bag, pop them in there, and it's again, come back to the boil yet. I'm keeping on the celery. ready to go into the freezer. Okay, the celery looks like it might be ready to come out of the pot. So again, same deal. Take the pot over, turn the gas on, take the, excuse me, take the pot over to the sink. Drain it, drain it, plunge it into the cold water and let it strain. I added a little more cold water to the sink. Because 
the water in it warmed up last um, round of celery. So let's get this bunch chopped. Put this back on to boil. Um, waiting for it. Okay. Chop in more celery. Pretty boring, isn't it? Food prep, but we will have to do it. This is, I don't know, this is life. This is life in my kitchen. This is how we do things. Day in, day out, this is what we do. So, Nice white egg sharp enough for this lot, I think. to go in the pan. I'm going to eat that piece of capsicum. It was too tempting. Use my colander. ready to be wiped up. I have a bear labelled. Next stop will be the um, next stop will be the sauerkraut, the cabbage for the sauerkraut. But we've got to be, um, tackle this first. So capsicum juice everywhere. So it doesn't stain. Clean as we go is my favourite way to do things. It makes a lot of food prep and preserving very easy. Don't need the freezer bags anymore, they can get put away. ready to do the um, cabbage. Okay. Not quite boiling yet. All right. So, take a breath. Let's see if this is ready to Go. We've lost the whiteboard marker. No, no. We found the whiteboard marker. <laughs> Tray number two. Oh, where am I? Let me bring you down so you can see it. I'm not very good at this, am I? Tray number two. much of a single layer as I can get it. Into the dehydrator. Water is boiling. So the next tray of um, 
met all. Sorry. No. I'm going to put the lid on this time so it boils faster. That ought to help. And then I can get to shredding these leaves. Break the bunches down. Just roughly. Because they're going to be powdered. sweetheart. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, everybody's home, everybody's wandering in and out, they've all lost stuff. Stalks, I might just quickly check and put in the I'm running out of space. I need more chopping space. is what I do in real time. So you're going to see how long it takes me to do it. You'll see the way I do it, how long it takes me to do it all this food prep ready for um, freezing and dehydrating and getting food in the freezer. Because it takes time, but it doesn't take hours and hours and hours. And maybe that something that you didn't realise. Maybe you always thought that it took too much time, it took all your time to do this when it doesn't really. It's a bit like cooking from scratch. It doesn't take any longer to cook a pizza from scratch than it does to ring up and get one delivered if you are prepared. Okay. All right. So it doesn't take long to do this. It's not difficult to do. I'm not using any special tool other than a dehydrator. I'm using a pot, a knife, a colander. Most kitchens have pots, knives and colanders or strainers of some kind in them, freezer bags. 
That's it, really. What it means is when celery is expensive, I'll have it on the shelf ready to use. Because I prepped ahead of time, I won't be paying full price for it. So I won't be paying $5 a bunch for celery when I paid $1.25, which makes a big, big difference to your food budget. People are always conscious of their food budget and what they um, can eat and afford to eat and what they can't afford to eat. So prepping ahead, buying in bulk, prepping ahead, saves you time because it only takes a few minutes longer to do three bunches as it does to do one, but it saves you a heap of money. And isn't that our goal, to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing? That means we need to be really mindful of our spending all the time, even our grocery spending. Okay, let's strain these off and get this. Um, this is a working kitchen so and I do things my way my kitchen my rules your kitchen your rules so you may think that what I'm doing is completely wrong in which case that's fine but this works for me wash the celery drain the celery I washed it yesterday or last night drained it overnight chopped it you'd see me chop it blanch it get it ready to go on the dehydrator now when it goes on the dehydrator shelves it's not bone dry there's still a little bit of moisture in it i don't mind that it takes maybe 10 15 20 minutes longer to dehydrate um i can live with that what i can't live with is paying five dollars a bunch of celery when i know if I'd been smart, I could have paid a lot, lot, a lot, lot less. Okay, water is boiling. So, the leaves wilt down really, really quickly, a bit like spinach. So, can you load the pot up? This will probably take two two boxes to do, uh, two boxes, two batches to do. Just loading the pot up. Bring it to the boil. They wilt down really quickly too, like spinach or silver beet does. So you don't need to wait a long time. And I would say that they are almost done if I have a look. I will tell you, they are almost, almost done. You'll see I've used most of it. So now I'm going to go back over here. And let me get a bowl so I'm not dripping green water everywhere. And I will show you what it looks like wilted down. It just looks like wilted spinach. A little bit of drama. That's it. See how vibrant and green it is? Isn't that pretty? Oh, so lucky. All right, let's enter the pot. And I'm calling that done. Many wouldn't, but I do. Because I do not. I do not. I do not make a habit of blanching. I just don't. All right. But... Put 
the lid on ready for it to, to come to the boil. It needs more um, trays. More dehydrator trays. There's some left from last time. Look at that. Bone dry still. for the next batch. I've got two trays left. I'm sorry, it's delicious. Probably. Oh, I've got three trays left, okay. much water as I can off and these guys this is ready to go on the tray and just be spread out my dehydrator yeah. there we go Hands are on camera, I'm ready. I'm finishing it goes. Ready to come off. I'm just going to turn that down. Finished. We've done the capsicums, we've got the celery in the dehydrator, we've got the mince jars and labelled them. Just the cabbage to prep for the sauerkraut. Okie dokie, we can do it. We can do it. By then I'll be ready for a cup of tea. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. This is ready to be wrapped up, but I do need it for it. Might be some board. It's over here out of the way. Getting out my big board. It's a big cabbage, so I need to bring out a big board. Thank you. 
thing. Last lot. In it goes. Right. Now, sauerkraut, cabbage for the sauerkraut is the next thing on the agenda. So, I will fess up and say this is the first time I've made sauerkraut. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I've got everything ready. The salt, I have the cabbage, I have weights to weigh the cabbage down. I have a big bowl to put the cabbage in. I've dry shredded it so that I can do the massaging. Um, so here goes. Let's see if it actually works. Hopefully it will. All right, these must be nearly ready. Last lot of blanching. Oh, I really don't like blanching, folks. There's a big stock pot full of water over there that the black, excuse me, now I've got the hiccups again, the blanching water. I am not going to pour that down the drain. I will either freeze it to use when I make stock or use it in the garden to water some of the pot plants. Um, it will depend on how I feel when I've cleaned up or as I'm cleaning up what I feel like doing but it won't go to waste it's not going down the drain there's good stuff in that water there's nutrients in that water and we're not going to waste them Where's the Hello, to this tray and into the dehydrator then we can start slicing or shredding the cabbage for the stuff. I've decided to try making it simply because we eat it it seems silly I mean it's cheap enough in the coals there's um, where is it I've got clout it's one I buy from Coles and it's actually reasonably inexpensive. It's under $3 a jar. So it's sort of, and it lasts us a while. So it's not that expensive. But it's like a 300 gram jar where I've got and I need to weigh this cabbage when I've um, finished with it shredded it to see how much but there's way more than 300 grams there for 
dollar. Dollar sixty-five. So and some salt. And that's really all that's going into this one is cabbage and salt. It will make its own brine. I'm not flavouring it because the one we buy isn't flavoured. I might try and play with flavours next time if I decide to do it again. We decide we like homemade sauerkraut. But really, it's like less than half the price. So for double the quantity for half the price. So it sort of makes sense. And it's I've watched lots of videos and read lots of recipes and lots of tutorials. And it's really, quite, really, really quite easy. So who is going to complain about it? Okay, let's get this last lot into the oven and we will get into the oven, into the dehydrator. I can turn it on and we'll be in business with at least one thing. get all the celery leaves out of the corner. Don't want to waste anything. It's a little bit sticky, but they will come out. Mm, it's all good food. We don't want to waste it. When you pay for food and you end up putting it in the bin, you might as well just take your money and throw it straight in the bin because that's pretty much what you're doing putting your money in the bin so don't waste anything if you possibly can you know, if you can find a way to preserve it for yourself to feed you and your family great do that i know lots of people say oh the jokes will eat it or i can give it to the dog or whatever and that's fine but Try to find ways to feed yourself with it first. What's that thing called? The dehydrator. <laughs> the dehydrator is set at 50 degrees because I consider celery a hard vegetable. So 50 degrees and I've set it for 12 hours. It will go off in the middle of the night and that doesn't matter. It will just wait until if I don't hear it, it will wait till I get up. Um, I will check it then. And if it needs to go a bit longer, then I can turn it on and let it run a bit longer. So, here we go. Whoops, three bunches of celery. Um, three bunches of celery, prepped and ready for long-term pantry storage. Now, let me just do a bit of tidying up here so that we can get on with... Okay, drying my hands, and I have to bowl. I need the salt.
And I need my scales. Scales. salt that's all I've got that's what I'm using it's non-iodized that's the one thing I did read over and over again non-iodized salt right I'm taking these big let me tip you down I'm taking these big outside leaves I do not want them Right there, they will go in the worm bin. No, compost somewhere. They'll go somewhere. Right. I am also using this big serrated knife. It's a bread knife, but it's a brilliant bread knife. And what I'm going to do is follow the veins on the cabbage and cut. so that I can cut it into pieces. Take that one off because it looks bug eaten. We don't want bugs in our crown. Okay. Oh, went a bit off. Not to worry, it will eventually get through. I've read says to shred it finely. So finely. I was going to get out my um, slicer, but I'm thinking that would scare people if, I, if they saw me doing cabbage on the slicer. So I don't have a chainmail glove, which I keep thinking I should get. Although I've never cut myself on my slicer. I am careful. how long it's taking me to do it, exactly what I'm doing. or shredding the cabbage this way because we eat it mostly on um, sandwiches so it doesn't need to be the longer shreds these are perfect to fit on a bun or in a wrap or on some bread so that's why I'm cutting it this way 
see. It's 300, so that's 500 grams. Right. 500 grams. years probably coming out for 20 years and they're just wonderful because they're lining okay so now I have to get in and massage it Should have used a bucket maybe, but then you wouldn't be able to see what's happening. Oh, interesting. Already, just that few, it's releasing um, fluid. Flying out of the bowl, it'd be more gentle, but how interesting is that? Didn't take long. So they say 10 minutes of this. what I can do for 10 minutes. Time it should be. Time it should see. I suppose you do it until all the salt has dissolved too. Be good, wouldn't it? Okay, so this is what I do for the next 10 minutes, you guys. I will speed speed you up through this bit. Because seriously, 10 minutes of this is going to be boring, isn't it? Although I could tell you what's coming up. And we're going to get back to our um, regular video schedule once I'm back from holiday. So we'll be back to our weekly live and then a cooking video, a craft video, a garden video, a finance video, a housekeeping video. I think that's what we used to do. Wow, guys, we can see it is actually 
shrinking down in the bowl. This is interesting this process. I'm trying to toss it round up. Don't really. Maybe maybe a kilo was being optimistic. optimistic for me to keep this up. It's a long time for these old hands to be doing this. But it is definitely releasing fluid and it is definitely, you can see it is shrinking down. Wow. How cool is this? Makes me wonder, who was the first person to make sauerkraut? How did they know to do it? Was it an accident? I'd say it was probably was. But you know, how, how exciting is this? I often wonder how, how foods come about. Who was the first person to um, make sauerkraut? Who was the first person to realise you could make sourdough? Who, you know, who? But first, how did something come about? How did they figure out that smoking preserved meats or salting preserved meats? Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, two or three centuries ago when there was no such thing as supermarket and things like salts and sugar and spices, but they were, they were, special they were like rich food rich people foods i guess a bit like tea and coffee um, so we know spices were used as currency because they were so um so special and so rare gosh it's amazing i am quite fascinated by this and it's only been not even five minutes yet with this it is absolutely breaking down oh, right. <laughs> this is so much fun We're learning something new I don't know why I've never tried this before because we do eat it Alan and I especially enjoy it. Um, so, gosh. I don't know. I don't know whether you can actually see just how moist it is. You can see how it's compacted down in the bowl. It's just amazing. I'm trying not to bruise it, although it doesn't look bruised. So we don't want it bruised. Just want it all nicely nice on for 10 minutes. <gasps> okay, got another five to go. The moisture coming out of it, it's incredible. Huh. There we go. I will use that other third of a cabbage for coleslaw for us for the week. We have coleslaw. We're going to have burgers for tea tonight. So we have coleslaw and our burgers. Um, just because it's easy after a long day or a long couple of hours in the kitchen prepping veggies, I do not feel like doing a great big complicated meal. So, um, this is fascinating to me guys absolutely fascinating the way it is breaking down I'm trying not to be too rough with it I'm just lifting it and tossing it as you can see all over the bench but oh my gosh just amazing 
wondering if I can see any fluid in the bottom of the bowl. Yes, yes, you can. I don't know whether I'll be able to catch it on camera for you. There is right around there a line of fluid that is released. Just there. Huh, how cool is this? I am going to revive the sourdough experiment. I think our house is too cold for sourdough at this time of year. Um, sourdough starters seem to like between 20 and 24 degrees. Our house rarely gets to 20 at this time of year. We simply we wear more clothes and use less heat. <laughs> so um, we're not cold and the house isn't damp, but we simply don't um, have the have the heater up that high, even with the and of course we use the wood fire, so it all depends on how hot the wood burns as to how much heat comes out of it. So we all are inclined to rug up with singlets and spencers and long sleeved shirts and jumpers and parties and good thick socks and leggings and tracksuit pants and things before we turn the heater on. So, but I do want to I do want to try again. I'm determined to conquer sourdough. Surely I can't be the only person on earth who can't get a sourdough starter going. It's just this frustrating potatoes out of me. Now this is packed down even more. It'll be interesting to see how much it packs down. A couple more minutes and then I can put it in the crock. Um, and pack it down with the weights. That should be fun. I was a bit worried about the salt on my hands. So I have to be careful and make sure I put some good lotion on when I'm finished cleaning up. really feel the juice in the bottom now. Oh, there's lots. Yeah, wow. This is amazing. This is very much a learning process for me. I don't know if all you guys out there that make sauerkraut are thinking, mm -hmm. eh, that's wrong, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. If you've got any hints for me, put them in the comments. And use all the advice I can get, because honestly, this is a first time. I had to keep it over on the dresser. It said to keep it out of direct sunlight, so it's going out of direct sunlight on the dresser. So, got the mat out there ready for it in case it, um, a tray in case it um, bubbles up and overflows, because apparently that can happen. Mm, gosh. Okay. All right, 10 minutes it's been. Let me wash my hands, get the crock, and I'll be right back. Right. Drying my hands so I don't drop the crock. I'll be back in a second. Just give me one. and rinsed and whatever so it's ready to go the instructions on this sheet say pack 
the cabbage tightly into the fermenting pot, which is this. Using a pestle and the weights, the cabbage should be covered in juices. If not, top up until just covered with the brine solution. Oh, and it's brine solution if required. Okay. I'm not sure whether it be required or not, but let's see. Now, this is clean. I cleaned it all the other day. Just drop it in. Drop it in. it in, packing in and I'm packing it down as tight as I can so that I understand that that's what I need to do and then I'm just going to and it might need some brine solution nothing showing on the top, maybe I didn't enough. Is that it? I didn't um, smash it down enough. So we we'll make the brine solution. So you have to have it covered in brine or it's going to go mouldy. If it goes mouldy, it's off and we do not want that. And that is a waste. So what was this brine solution? One litre of cool boiled water, one tablespoon of salt. Okay, what about Half a litre of water. It should be more than enough. Not a tablespoon. What is half a tablespoon? It is seven and a half mils. It's one and a half teaspoon. That's another reason I really like these because it actually has seven and a half mils on it. So I know that to get the right measurement. Stir it round till it is dissolved. Shouldn't take long for the salt to dissolve. Says she is just stirring and watching it take its time to dissolve. And then we'll pour it, there it is, in your bowl. And then a few little grains left. Pour that in. According to this, anyway, place the ceramic lid on top, fill the moat with water to create a seal. Okay, let me get some water. Let's see whether it was hot water or cold water. Um, fill in the moat. There we go, hopefully. Fill the moat with water to create a seal. That's something different. Um, 
store at 20 degrees to ferment for three to seven days. Okay, so I have a tray with a, a preserving mat on it over on my dresser. So I'm going to move it over there. And if you tune in later in the week, I might be able to tell you how it's turned out. Alrighty, I've got cabbage making sauerkraut, celery in the dehydrator, capsicums ready to go in the freezer, kitchen to clean up. Life is good. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, a big thumbs up would be appreciated. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please do. It's as simple as clicking that subscribe button. And if you know someone who might like this uh, video, click the share button, send them the link. Details about the Cheapskates Club are underneath me. That's about it. Thank you again for watching all the way through. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. I do read every comment and I really appreciate you taking the time to comment. And of course, if you've got any ideas on what I've done wrong, if I've done anything wrong or how I could improve the sauerkraut, let me know because this is my first time making it and I am a tad excited. All right, I'll be soon, back very, very soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.